it is begun. Hmm. Perhaps I could have a try at that. As you say. Very well. I shall do it. Shall be done. I'll be done.
I lied to you, you know, about why I left Ole. I didn't feel like talking about it then, what happened to me. Maybe it will affect us, maybe not, but you should know. I came to Ferelden and the Chantry because I was being hunted in Orle. I was framed, betrayed by someone I thought I knew and could trust. Marjolaine. She was my mentor and friend. She taught me the bardic arts, how to enchant with words and song, to carry myself like a high-born lady, to blend in as a servant. The skills I learned, I used to serve her, my bardmaster, because I loved her, and because I enjoyed what I did. You can say it was my fault. There was a man I was sent to kill. I was to bring Marjolaine everything he carried. I don't know who this man was. She gave me a name and a description, and I hunted him down. I found documents on his body, sealed documents. My curiosity got the better of me. Something told me that I needed to know what was in those letters. Marjolaine had been selling all kinds of information about Orle to other countries, Nevara and Antiva among others. It was treason. Some. But I had always assumed Marjolaine only operated within Orle. This was an unhappy surprise for me. My life has barred, taught me that my loyalties should be kept fluid. My concern was not that she was a traitor, but that her life would be in danger if she was caught. Orle has been at war with so many countries, it takes a harsh view of such things, as I later discovered. I should have left well alone, but I didn't. I had to tell Marjolaine I feared for her life. She brushed aside my concern. She admitted her guilt, but said it was in the past. That is why the documents had to be destroyed, she said. I believed her. I kept believing, up till the moment they showed me the documents, altered by her hand, to make me look the traitor. The Orlesian guards, they captured me, did terrible things to make me confess and reveal my conspirators. It was a traitor's punishment I endured, and at the end of it, all that awaited me was eternity in an unmarked grave. The skills Marjolaine taught me were good for something at least. I broke free when I saw the opportunity. I did not seek Marjolaine out. If she thought I was coming for her, she would have me caught again. I was tempted to confront her. I was furious, betrayed. But what could I do against her? And so I fled to Ferelden, to the Chantry and the Maker. Ferelden protected my person, and the Maker saved my soul. And that is the reason I am here. The real reason. No more lies between us, at least in this. It feels good to have this off my chest. Thank you for listening and understanding. Oh, marvelous. I'm to keep this.
So, tell me, how did you become a Grey Warden? Then you became a Grey Warden out of necessity. But Duncan must also have seen something special in you. The Order does not take in recruits just to save their life. You must be proud to be able to represent your tribe and the Dalish as a Grey Warden. Sometimes it gives me comfort to think that everything will end up the way it's supposed to. That it will be all right. You were chosen. You survived the joining when others did not. Perhaps it was meant to be. I must ask, what does being a Grey Warden mean to you? There's that, of course. But there's more to being a Grey Warden than killing Darkspawn and saving the world from the Blight. Ultimately, being a Grey Warden is about serving others. About serving all people, whether elves or dwarves or men. As a Grey Warden, you are a guardian of men, and you guard them because their continued existence is more important than you are. Thus it is you who serves, not they. A good king, a true king who cares for his land, uses his power to rule firmly but fairly. He serves his people first and foremost. The king who does not do this, who believes that he is entitled to his power, who abuses it and uses it for his own means, is a tyrant. And the country suffers for it. If you live apart from others and your actions affect only you, then you may do as you wish. But if you have power, influence and strength, your every action will be as a drop of water in a clear, still pond. The drop causes ripples, and ripples spread. Think of how far they will go, how wide they will become, how will they affect the pond. But I've lectured enough for today. I should stop before I wear out my welcome.
Unexpected. Thank you. Something I can help with? Um, I don't think you have the correct aptitude. I could give you some pointers though. You may be able to pass them on to someone you know. Let's just go over there, away from the others. For safety, yes? I expect there shall be daggers flying about willy-nilly for a time. Something I can help with? Yes? What's on your mind? My mother was from Denerim, and I consider myself a Ferelton. Mother served an Orlesian noblewoman who lived here when Orle ruled. When Orle was defeated and the common folk began to resent the presence of any Orlesian, the lady returned to Orle. She took my mother with her. I was born in Orle and did not set foot in Ferelden till much later. Mother was always telling me stories of her homeland. I think she missed it. Mother died when I was very young. Lady Cecily let me stay with her. I had no one else. She was quite old then, and she had me study music and dance to entertain her. It is unfair that I have more memories of Cecily than my mother. Strangely, the only thing I really remember of Mother was her scent. She kept dried flowers in her closet amongst her clothes. Small white Ferelden wildflowers with a sweet fragrance. Mother called them Andraste's Grace. They were very rare in Orle. But enough about that. Let us move on. You. They're very pretty. These were her favorite. <sighs> I haven't seen these in such a long time. They smell just like mother used to. Thank you. Thank you so much for remembering. but I get to stare at you luridly while you do so. Oh, you wish to know about Antiva, do you? The only way to truly appreciate it would be to go there. It is a warm place, not cold and harsh like this Ferelden. In Antiva it rains often, but the flowers are always in bloom. Or so the saying goes. It is fine enough with its dogs and its mud. The people are spirited, even if they can't tell the difference between an assassin and a mere killer. I hail from the glorious Antiva city, home to the royal palace. It is a glittering gem amidst the sand, my Antiva city. Do you come from someplace comparable? <laughs> you have me there indeed. I for one can make no such claim as I never laid eyes on the woman. Hmm. You know what is most odd? We speak of my homeland, and for all its wine and its dark-haired beauties and the lilo flutes of the minstrels, 
I miss the leather the most. <laughs> it may as well be, but not this once, no. I mean the smell. For years, I lived in a tiny apartment near Antiva City's leather-making district, in a building where the crows stored their youngest recruits, packed in like crates. I grew accustomed to the stench, even though the humans complained of it constantly. To this day, the smell of fresh leather is what reminds me most of home more than anything else. Oh, not so long, I know. It is my first time away from Antiva, however, and the thought of never returning makes me think of it constantly. Before I left, I was tempted to spend what little coin I possessed on leather boots I spotted in a store window. Finest Antivan leather. Perfect craftsmanship. Ah, but I was a fool to leave them. I thought, ah, Zevran, you can buy them when you return as a reward for a job well done. More the fool I, no? True, and it's a comforting thought. One simply never knows what is to come next. How could I have suspected I would end up defeated by a beautiful Grey Warden, a woman who then spares my life? I could not. I say you are beautiful because it is true, should I not? And glad I am to hear it. Now, if it is all the same to you, I would prefer not to speak more of Antiva. It makes me wistful and hungry for a proper meal. Your dog is filthy. I can smell him 50 yards off. <coughs> that may be so, but all the same, I would like your permission to bathe him. Excellent. I will get my soaps, and the dog shall have his bath after supper. I've a question, if I may. Well, here's the thing. I swore an oath to serve you, yes? And I understand the quest you're on, and this is all very fine and well. My question pertains to what you intend to do with me once this business is over with, as a point of curiosity. Could I? And what if I didn't wish to leave? I'm sure I could come up with a few more, if pressed. It is good to know what my options might be, but that is for another time. For now, we have much to do, yes? You know... Maybe this isn't the best time to be thinking about this, but I have something to ask you. Chances are we'll be heading to Denerim soon. And when we're there, I wonder if we might be able to look someone up. I'm not talking about a friend, exactly. And no, it's not that sort of friend either. The thing is, I have a sister, a half-sister. I told you about my mother, right? She was a servant at Redcliffe Castle and she had a daughter. Only, I never knew about her. I don't think she knew about me, either. They kept my birth a secret, after all. But, after I became a Great Warden, I did some checking, and... Well, I found out she's still alive. In Denerim. She's the only real family I have left. The only family not also mixed up in the whole royal thing. I've just been thinking that maybe it's time I went to see her. With the blight coming and everything, I, I don't know if I'll ever get another chance to see her. Maybe I can help her. Warn her about the danger, I don't know. Could we? I'd appreciate that. If something happened to her and I never went to at least see her, I don't know if I could forgive myself. Her name is Goldana, 
And I think she remarried, but still lives just outside the alienage. If we're in the area, then... Well, it's worth a look. Something on your mind? Of course. Others, yes, but not yourself. I need someone who's trained first as a warrior. It's as much about discipline as anything. I guess if I'm going to give up Chantry secrets, I may as well go all the way. Send whoever you want trained to me in camp, and I'll see what I can do. that for me? Really? This? This is my mother's amulet. It has to be. But why isn't it broken? Where did you find it? Oh, the Arl study? Then he must have found the amulet after I threw it at the wall. And he repaired it and kept it. I don't understand. Why would he do that? I guess you could be right. We never really talked that much. And then the way I left... Thank you. I mean it. I... thought I'd lost this to my own stupidity. I'll need to talk to him about this if he recovers from his... When... he recovers, that is. I wish I'd had this a long time ago. Did you remember me mentioning it? Wow. I'm more used to people not really listening when I go on about things. Ho, ho, ho. See this gesture I'm making? Can you hear that? I've watched a lot of humans in my time. It should be aware that I've decided that it is not much like any of them. Surely it must come from some superior lineage, yes? Some breed of flesh creature that has decided to elevate its genetic stock above its natural shortcomings? Then that must be it. The humans have always spoken about elves being inferior, but obviously this is their own stupidity talking. I would appreciate if it didn't spread around that I said anything. Humans might start to get the wrong idea. They might start thinking their race is not completely hopeless. Indeed, can it imagine the horror? <laughs> now, let us crush something into a fine paste before it starts to think I've gone all soft. Perish the thought. It speaks. Different. Different than what? Different than a statue? Different than a log? Should I talk in a monotone? Yes, Master, I exist to serve the Master. I shall kill for the Master and only for the Master. Perhaps it expected me to have a booming voice. Recite limericks. <laughs> I can recite limericks, if it likes. Mostly, they involve slaughtering pigeons in creative and invasive manners. I have never met another golem. I have no idea what one might be like, or why I wouldn't be like them. Why? Has it met other golems? Did they not sound as I do? Did I say it was bad? Huh. It thinks I hang on its every word, waiting for approval. I don't know what other golems might be like, but I am already superior by virtue of my free will. This is a good thing. Imagine the benefits. No need to eat or sleep or perform other... functions. Walk underwater, crush the heads of every opponent. The possibilities are limitless. 
Barring the occasional 30 years or so of paralysis, there's little to compare. Now stop talking so much. The wagging of its moist little tongue is distracting. Enchantment? Enchantment! Something you need? I'm sure either my boy or I can help you out. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount. Enchantment? Enchantment! If there's anything I can do for you, please, please tell me. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount.
Are you sure I can't interest you in this hat? A pair of earrings, perhaps. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected. And with your discount. I await your command. So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> Why do you ask me such questions? I do not probe you for pointless information, do I? <laughs> oh, what luck. What is it you asked if I grew up in the wilds? A curious question. Where else would you picture me? For many years it was simply Flemeth and I. The wilds and its creatures were more real to me than Flemeth's tales of the world of man. In time, I grew curious. I left the wilds to explore what lay beyond, never for long. Brief forays into a civilized wilderness. Would you not do the same? Your world is an unforgiving and cold place. The wilds I hail from is home to me and I a natural denizen. For all that I had been taught, however, the truth of the civilized lands proved to be... overwhelming. I was unfamiliar with so much. So confident and bold was I, yet there was much that Flemeth could never have prepared me for. <laughs> Equal parts daring and foolhardy, perhaps. Only once was I accused of being a witch of the wilds, and that by a chastened who happened to be travelling with a merchant caravan. He pointed and gasped, and began shouting in his strange language, and most assumed he was casting some curse upon me. I acted the terrified girl, and naturally, he was arrested. Men are always willing to believe two things about a woman. One, that she is weak, and two, that she finds him attractive. I played the weakling and battered my eyelashes at the captain of the guard. <laughs> Child's play. The point being that I was able to move through human lands fairly easily. Whatever humans think a witch of the wild looks like, tis not I. Not that I did not have trouble. There are things about human society which have always puzzled me, such as the touching. Why all the touching for a simple greeting? To begin with, yes. What is the point of touching my hand? I find it an offensive intrusion. There were many nuances that Flemeth could never tell me of. When to look into another's eyes. How to eat at a table. How to bargain without offending. None of these things I knew. I still do not understand it all, truth be told, but then I gave up long ago any hope of doing so. When I returned to the wilds last, I swore to Flemeth that I had no intention of leaving again. Yes? Let's ignore the entire Darkspawn threat and the presence of a simpleton as your only other Grey Warden ally, then. Not that I lack appreciation for the intent of your comment. Thank you. Well, let's get on with it before the ground opens up and swallows us, yes? You are not quite as callow as I thought. That is... unexpected. You sound surprised. You must have heard this before. You'll get over it. Eventually. I have wondered that myself. It is one of the many things I find puzzling about your behavior. No, let's leave this discussion polite. 
I was sent to be the eyes of the Antom. The Arishok asked what is the Blight. By his curiosity, I am now here. Why do you? Exactly. You don't ask, nor do I. The Arashok sends me and I go. Yes. Never. I cannot go home. Thank you. Can we move on? We keep the Darkspawn waiting. As you wish.